We're going to revisit the sales cycle flowchart introduced in the lecture. Let's start by meeting Jill and Jimmy. Jill is a purchasing manager for Quick Clothing. Jimmy works for our client in sales. Hi, my name is Jill Django. I would like to purchase 300 shirts, item number 3152, in size medium. My name is Jimmy, and I am happy to help you. Let's write up your sales order. How will you be paying? I would like to buy them on account. My company is Quick Clothing. Okay, no problem. I'm going to write your sales order. I will then send your sales order to our credit department for approval. If there are any problems, they will contact you. Can you please review and sign the sales order? Sure. Thank you for your business. Note that the sales order should be serially numbered for part of the completeness and existence assertions. Next, Jimmy visits Denise, the client's credit manager. Hi, Denise. Can you please review this sales order from Quick Clothing? They are paying on account. Sure thing. I will let you know if there are any issues. Quick Clothing has been a customer for over two years and always pays its balance within the 30-day payment period. Its credit is good. Based on her review, Denise stamps the sales order approved. She'll now create three copies, one for shipping, one for billing, and one for accounting. Notice that this credit check process prior to shipping is an excellent control and helps to bolster the valuation assertion. Next, we'll pay a visit to the warehouse floor. Tom Smith, a member of the inventory staff, will pull the inventory based on the approved order. Hey Megan, this box is ready to be shipped. Megan is the warehouse manager. I will get this ready for our daily 3 p.m. pickup by fast shipping. Now she prepares the bill of lading. Three good controls in place here. First, the approved sales order was required for Tom to release the goods from the warehouse. Second, the segregation of duties between the authorization function from credit and sales and the custody of the inventory in the shipping department. Finally, the bill of lading you see here is sequentially numbered, again helping with the completeness and existence assertions. Looks like this is a valid sale. It's an approved sale order for 300 medium shirts of item number 3152. And it looks like that was shipped on 515 year two. I'm going to create and print the invoice so that I can mail the invoice to Quick Clothing. In addition, I'm going to update the accounts receivable sales journal by creating journal entry debit accounts receivable, Quick Clothing for $1,350, Credit sales for $1,350. Again, a number of good controls in place here. First off, the matching performed by Annalise to confirm the shipping documents and sales order. Second, the use of sequential numbering on the sales invoice. And finally, good segregation of duties between the record keeping, custody, and authority functions. Last, Polly, the company controller, reviews all documentation and says, Everything agrees. I'm going to post these items from the journal to the general ledger. Two more good controls in place here. First, the posting to the general ledger only occurs after verification, and we'd expect to see independent reconciliation of the AR and GL at various points by independent parties. Second, periodic reconciliation from the receivables master file to the general ledger by an independent party within the company. Now, note, let's say the auditor was trying to test the existence of sales. We'd go from the financial statements and then drill down to the details from the financial statements, to the general ledger, to the subsidiary ledger, and finally to the sales detail. Now let's say from the detail, the auditor selected this sale transaction that we just discussed, May 15, year two, to quick clothing for the amount of $13.50. We'd expect the auditor to ask Creative CPA to pull the evidence, which would include the bill of lading, invoice, and sales order you've just seen. The auditor would then match all these documents to confirm quantity, price, and total amount. Now, admittedly, the auditor could also use this as a dual purpose test and test controls as well. For example, testing that shipped items have to have an approved sales order.